Welcome to Business Over Beer, where entrepreneurs, small business owners, and people passionate about what they do bring us their stories and their favorite beer. Hosted by Ben Surratt, Jonathan Kaler, and Jason Canope, it's time to get down to business and drink some beer. Welcome back, everybody, to the second biggest podcast in the Pacific Northwest. That's right, business over beer is still number two, but episode two of this interview will bring us to the apex, guaranteed. Why is that, Canope? Why? Because we've got Tara Tinsley, country music singer, with us ready to bring us to the top of the northwest charts that's right tara tinsley welcome back you you didn't leave us it's been a long week she tried away for a whole week ben (laughs) hasn't had anything to drink for a whole week we were wondering if you were going to come back we're so glad that you uh that you came back a week later yeah of course well i had so much fun the first time (laughs) did you you just got done telling us you didn't have fun (laughs) what are you you changing your, are you changing your story now? <laughs> and we're all wearing the same clothes. Jeez. <laughs> I know, right? Something seems amiss here. Hang on. You can't wear... Well, you know, I washed my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my uh, goodness. Uh, in all seriousness, Tara, thank you uh, so much again for, uh, for joining us on Business Over Beer. Uh, for anybody who may have missed part one, I can't imagine that that could possibly be true, that anyone would have dared miss part one and your awesome acoustic rendition of your new single, Faith. But in case they missed it, uh, maybe just once again, give us just sort of the 50,000 foot view uh, of Tara Tinsley, the musician, and uh, kind of what you're into. So um, I play country music and... Um, I just recently released actually a Christian single called Faith. And, you know, I moved um, from California to Nashville and that made my music sound more country that brought more of the country out. Um, And then, you know, obviously I lived in the Pacific Northwest for a little bit, Um, but now I live in Texas and, uh, I have a baby now, so I haven't been playing so much, but I used to tour. I've toured in Japan, the U S. Um, and you know, I'm just like a, uh, local slash kind of, you know, worldwide star, but I, I don't feel like I'm that Tara, stop. You are awesome. And stop. She's like, I don't want to say that I'm really that good, but I'm pretty good. And like, you are really good. And if you don't believe us people, listen to the acoustic version of Faith again. It's awesome. Tara, you are awesome. Talking about yourself. Like, it really is. We're saying, I'm great, guys. Like, listen to me. I think that's the hardest thing about being a musician is saying, listen to me, you know, because I'm great because I mean, everyone else is saying the same thing. Right. So anyway, mm. thank you for saying that. Cause then I didn't have to say it. Yes. I agree with him. <laughs> it is true. Country but as, music but as we learned, Hensley. but as we learned in part one, you don't rely on all <laughs> the positive or all the negative okay. feedback because you try to just stay grounded with who you are and, and do it for yourself, which is a, which is a good lesson. Um, yeah. I can't wait to uh, learn more about the the shift from you know country to Christian and and kind of what that looks like. Um, you're gonna play a couple more songs for us uh, when we wrap up, but before we get into any of that, Ben, are you still thirsty? Well, Jonathan, as we know, it's been a week, and yes, this bag has been here, and I'm ready. I am thirsty i knew it so tara every episode of the business over beer podcast my lovely wife angela picks us out a mystery beer 
we call this segment Angie's Mystery Beer. Now, here's how it works. Unfortunately, you will not be able to partake in this, but, but you can watch the game. So what we do is we, we kind of, we have this bag and it's a can this time, thank goodness. And we open it up like that. And we pour a little bit out and we just try to guess what kind of beer it is. It, it, it's a game we play, yeah, whatever, no big deal. Yeah, it's, it's no big whoop, right? It's not a big deal. It's just a little game, it's a little fun. Fun with beer. And just I, by- I caught a glimpse of the top of the beer. Yeah, and I just it by looked... doing that, tear up. Uh, again, yep. Look at this. Oh man. I knew it. Uh, I knew it. I got, I got beer stains on my notes. <laughs> moral oh, lord moral oh my goodness look yes, at that that's moral <laughs> that is moral <laughs> whoa look at tara's face like you tread lightly gentlemen I'm, you could i'm just like i'm waiting for you guys to taste it I'm just like, look at on. that look at that that yeah. is gorgeous it is gorgeous. You guys went in a little bit more than I did. Mm. Oh man, it smells really good too. <laughs> oh jeez. No, I see. It smells boozy to me. It's boozy. Woo! Are you guys gonna make it? <clears throat> All right. Prost. We'll make it. Prost. Prost. You know what? Well, yeah. weird. It's weird. That's not boozy. It's not boozy. It's not. It's it's really sweet. It's sweet. Really sweet. And then it's got kind of this weird bitterness that, it, yeah, yeah. that, that like cuts right through the middle. Like it is doesn't it kind cut of, around. It cuts is right. Is it kind of tart too? Is it taste kind of tarty? I mean, like, is it like a is it the date? Yeah, is, I taste or, it. Or, or is it like a is it like a cherry stout, maybe? Ah, uh, there maybe you go. Cherries? Could be completely. The time of year. It's the time of year, bro. Do you remember the cherries, Tara? God, yeah. it is so sweet. It's cloying. Mm. And then that weird bitterness. So it's almost like it's almost like fruit and coffee. <clears throat> oh my god. That is really a strange beer. <laughs> Whew. I've got no clue. It's not. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't drink like a, like a big boozy. It's not barrel. I don't. I don't presume it's barrel aged. No, uh, I taste. I taste some whiskey. Uh, I, or something. I was gonna say. Actually, I'm getting. I'm getting kind of that like boozy yeah. heartburn now after a couple of sips. So you may be right. I, you might be all right with the cherry thing, dude. Just coating or is my it, glass. <laughs> or, or is it? Or is it just? I mean, or is it just chocolate? Is it just chocolate and coffee? Barrel aged chocolate and coffee. Because it could get a little bit of sweetness from if it's chocolate and and bourbon, those things could send the sweetness over Ooh, the top. That's a good point. I don't know. It's kind of weird, man. All right, Canoper. All right, big reveal. Let's see what we got here. So Tara, bombastic brewing. This is a where's the name of it? Oh, Shiver Coffee Stout, Thomas Hammer Coffee Roasters from Bombastic Brewing. Oh, jeez. Silky but bold imperial stout with notes of dark chocolate. Boom. Mixing with Thomas Hammer coffee to oh. create a delightful espresso flavor. A sipper for dessert or breakfast, if so, if inclined. so inclined. That is awesome. <laughs> That's great. Whew. That's great. Bombastic Brewing. I've never, I've never heard of them. Ten they are out of Idaho. Idaho. No. Yeah. Oh no. Well, that's weird. It says brewed and canned by Payette Brewing Company in Boise for Bombastic Brewing. Oh, so Bombastic Brewing, that's that's a first. So Payette Brewing is doing contract brewing for Bombastic. So they're running a brewery, but they're contracting out the brewing from a different brewery. Payette, I've heard of. I ain't drinking all. You guys see this right here? Woo. Yeah, ten I saw half, that. Ten and a half percent. Yeah. Tara, ten and a half percent. Wow. 
No wonder you guys can't handle it. Tara, I told you before we even got to part two, last last part one, I told you in part one, <laughs> my wife is a dark beer fanatic. Yeah. So Tara, as a small business owner, myself and Canoper and Kaler, we've learned that it's very important to be able to tell your story as a small business owner to, to relay to your clients, right? Yeah. So in your business, you do it through song. Yes. And I, the, the one thing that I really, really like about your, um, what, what you do is you explained in your song of restore why you made that song. Does every song that you write have a story behind it or is it just you have words or how does that work for you? Like with Restore. And if you want to talk about Restore, I know it's mental health is a little bit of our thing. We love to talk about mental health and stuff like that. And um, if you can maybe talk about that for people to understand what I'm talking about and then maybe talk about the process of you writing songs. Yeah, so um, restored with a D. Um, restored, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Too much beer. No. I know. Um, no. <laughs> uh, it. So, yeah, I'll, every song, mostly every song has some sort of story behind it. Um, even if it is just like how I came up with it, you know, just, oh, I woke up in the middle of the night or something and it came to me. You know, there's a story behind every thing um I don't not doesn't mean it's interesting or not you know but um restored is actually a, a series I started and um will continue once I have more time um where I originally actually wanted to start the series where I rewrote really depressing songs into more uplifting songs like and the song that made me think of it was um you know that song that by Johnny Cash. Well, okay, Johnny Cash covered it. But Hurt. Yes, that song. So depressing. And I mean, I get it. Like, if you're feeling really depressed, that might like speak to you, which is cool and all, but it's not going to help you. It might help you in a way that you can relate, but it's not going to bring you out. And I was like, I wanted to rewrite that song, but I realized that after thinking, oh, I want to rewrite these songs to be more uplifting for people that are hurting and to maybe bring them out of the hurt in some way, shape, or form, because I've been in terrible places and I needed someone to just reach down and grab me out. And I realized it's illegal. So unless you get the approval of the artist to do that, you can only do parodies. So, because, you know, if you're changing a song to be uplifting, you're you know, it's, and you're not like making fun of the song or making fun of something with the song. It's kind of changing the art, you know, and the meaning of why they put it out there and the artist might be mad about that. So, um, so I, I decided just to write my own songs. Fine. I'm going I'm to, I'm a writer. I'm going to write my own songs then, um, and have them be all uplifting and then tell the stories behind why I wrote the songs and also integrate, um, you know, you know, the Bible and Christian mm -hmm. verse to really solidify those deeper truths behind what I was saying. And um, so restored is mainly based on that, like how, how you can be restored and how, I mean, music can help restore you and different songs can inspire you to be restored, but how you can really be restored by finding, you know, what is, the only thing that can really restore any of your hurt and mm. problems, you know, and which is, you know, Jesus. Mm. Did, did, was it, was it a difficult path for um, you like internally or was it pretty simple? Uh, to, to do restore it or? Yeah. So it was difficult actually um, because what got me and what, I had the idea for a long time, but 
what got me to wanting to do it and actually pushing myself to just do it because I have many ideas that I never ever do um, was uh, one day when I was in Washington um, I, when I lived there on the waterfront um, in Tacoma I was just looking out my window on a snowy day and I noticed there was someone just laying out there and I took a picture from my husband like because it was super far we, we lived a few stories up I'm like hey I'm kind of scared should I go check on this person and he's like you probably should so and you never know there's a bunch of different characters that live downtown Tacoma so I don't know that you never know what's going on so I went down there and uh found a guy who apparently had took his own life and he was probably I think 20-ish early 20s and I had the hardest time after that getting his face out of my head and uh just you know I never came across someone that had just you know taken their own life and then also hearing that same day his mom and dad came and just torn up and obviously they had no idea because they were just in vacation in Hawaii and in my mind I was like okay this is the person that needs this idea and you know maybe he never would have heard it and you know I'll never be a part of his life to be able to like you know oh man if only I would have just looked out the window sooner but he will always be a part of mine and I can use that to maybe help someone else that maybe, you know, will hear the words that they really need to hear and maybe believe them. And you never know what they will take into their own heart, but maybe, you know, I could help that one person because that's what matters is, you know, yeah, you can have fame and money and all those things. Those are great. You can't take them with you when you go, but you can leave your mark and by a mark I mean helping people and changing lives so that they can help people and change lives so that's how it all started and um and it was really hard to get beyond that too because I kept walking by the waterfront you know scared to even walk near there my dog loved that area because there's sand and he just loved it and he was trying to pull me there all the time and one morning I was just like, God, I can't do this. I can't, I can't just be afraid of where I live. And my dog's pulling me there. I'm like, fine, I will go. I will walk over there. I'm going to stand right in the spot, just right in the spot. And I stood right in the spot. And then I just felt God tell me, now forgive him. And so I forgave him. And then ever since then, it just no longer was, that face was no longer there. And I could enjoy the waterfront and I realized that I was holding unforgiveness in my heart for him like you know impacting my life because he he hurt his mom and his dad and everyone by doing that because you know taking your own life is a very selfish thing to do for other people because they don't think because they don't think about what how it's affecting other people which is normal I mean they're only they're hurting they don't know they don't they're not going to think beyond that but also I, I didn't realize how much he affected me and how much he hurt me because I just Felt like I wanted to help him so bad and um so I guess this is the way I forgave him and now I'm helping him in a way like figuratively by helping other people I guess <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't happen again whoa <laughs> I mean it's so I mean it's so interesting to think about what you just said there, obviously, there's a there's a lot to kind of distill and unpack there. But um, this thought that you were never a part of this person's life. But yet he will now be a part of your life forever. Yeah. And trying to find the meaning in that. Mm -hmm. Right. And you, you did that through forgiveness, and then trying to 
find joy and, and spread joy for others in a, in a way to try to help people. I mean, in, in a way, it's almost a gift, right? You couldn't save him. Yeah. Right. And that's a shame. And there's a lot of people out there that, that are going through that same hurt. Um, but the way we honor that pain, both his and then, you know, by, you know, yours, by, by what you encountered with him is to try to pay that forward. And it sounds like that's what you're doing. And that's, that's pretty incredible. Thank you. I mean, I couldn't do it without God because I swear, you know, I, he's the one who brought me through that. And I mean, I know it, it sounds stupid to say like that happened to me, you know, like as if I'm some like poor person, but it, it did happen to me. And I guess even my sister-in-law was checking in on me because she's like, you know, people after, you know, experiencing something like that have PTSD and they need to talk to someone. If you need to talk to someone, you, you should, you know, if you can't get as, you know, because I kept having flashbacks and like ha having his face in my head, of course, you know, it's just, you know, it's your brain trying to process what you just saw. And because it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> it, he had a, it was a you know I won't describe it but anyway it wasn't pretty and so you know it's, it was an interesting situation that I guess I, once you admit you know like it's it, ha it also happened to you and that you were holding something against someone you know you just kind of have to go through that process of I'm surprised I I didn't know that that's what I needed to do and it's just because I faced my fear of that spot, you know, God's just like, here, well, this is what you need to do. You weren't afraid enough to come here. So forgive him. And, and that's just amazing how in that moment, God really showed me how forgiveness works. It's amazing because if you don't forgive someone, it only hurts you. Well, along those same lines too. I mean, think, I mean, you, you saw it from your window. Yeah. <laughs> and you could have just written it off to, hey, there's some weirdo out there just sunbathing in the snow. And you didn't. You took the leap. You know, you you felt compelled to go and try to help. Yeah. You know, you for for whatever reason, God put you in that position to go take that on. Right. <laughs> and so um, so you know, you you were there for a reason. And it sounds like that reason is then to to try to find this new way to to help people going forward yeah he, he's obviously god knew i could handle it and he probably wanted me on that path of helping people too you know through music and just what i'm doing well i think that's a good segue i mean we get a little bit of a of an insight into your faith and kind of your um you know your your belief system and so you're a country singer you're you're billed as a country singer right um so but you have i saw that you described this song the one that you played for us uh in the last episode as kind of your first foray into christian music so yeah. kind of talk a little bit about why you wanted to write that song why you wanted to write a christian song and is that what we can expect from you going forward or will you will you go back to more of the country or are you going to try to find some sort of um you know a little bit of, of both in your music going forward in terms of um, my journey forward um from that moment actually and from you know a few songs before then when in writing i was writing and gearing myself my songs more towards christian music and then of course you know with restored and everything i was writing a lot of christian songs that i never released like publicly only on YouTube. That's why this faith is my first Christian song I've released in public besides YouTube. Um, but I, I just couldn't get off of that. Like I, I'm just immersed in this um, inspiration of what really matters, you know? And so a lot of the stuff I've been writing since then has been Christian music. Um, I do have songs I'm gonna release that aren't just because I've already recorded them, but I really don't know where my journey is going forward with future recordings. I, but I just feel strongly and I have felt so strongly about just this, because I'm just so thankful for how God has changed my life and 
how much he's done for me in the weirdest ways, you know, that I didn't even expect. And when I look back in my life, just realizing that he's been there and I just was too blind to realize it. It's just, I can't help but want to honor that. And, and it's like, I don't know, is there's just some, that's where my inspiration lies right now. And I don't know if that will change or not, but it almost seems just to me, it feels kind of cool to sing about, you know, hurt and pain and stuff. It, it just, those songs, the song are so good, you know, and I love Tom Petty songs. And I love all these different songs, but for my writing in the future, the hurt and pain doesn't inspire me anymore. And it's not because I don't feel hurt or don't feel pain and I don't feel frustrated or anything like that. It's just, it's not what drives me and it's not like in my spirit anymore. And I mean, I am not writing right now anyway, but I just, it's not like I'm writing like these happy, amazing songs either. They are some of them about struggle, but it's about the answer to the struggle as well. And it almost seems like going backwards, and it's not like it's going backwards, but going to the past from there and writing how I used to is almost impossible because my mind and myself has changed so much. So I don't, I guess that's a, that's a long way to say, I don't know, <laughs> but I feel like my journey forward is going to be different. You think that comes from awesome. maturity and and growing up? Do you, you know, I mean, I think, you know, as as we get older and when we're in our teens and 20s and, and we don't have any of the answers, it seems easier to write about the hurt and the pain and the struggle. But as we get older, we start to we start to get answers to some of those questions, right? We get resolution to some of that hurt and to some of that pain. If you're lucky enough to get resolution to some of that hurt and some of that pain. Um, so do you think that maybe is a result of, of you getting older, going through maturity, or maybe finding some some new happiness that, that you didn't have when you were younger? Is it just kind of part of that that cycle of life uh, as far as where you're where you're starting to maybe take your ideas and your writing going forward? Well, you mentioned like if you're lucky enough to get resolution. And I just feel like I feel like you can get resolution if you search for it. Like no matter what, you know, if I, I'm the, like I said, I'm like the detective. I need to figure things out. And that's, I feel like, yeah, it does have to do with maturity, but some, but sometimes people just struggle with pain and even though they get mature and older and they don't get over it. And I think it's because, you know, even through their maturity, they hold on to it because they feel like that's who they are and that's their identity. Cause maybe that's all they've ever known. And they're not searching for something like resolution or um, some, not even, maybe even not a resolution, but just like, you know, just to have it a different way or something, you know, like maybe life doesn't have to be this way. Um, maybe there'll never be answers to this, but you know, maybe I can find something, an, another answer to something else that will bring me somewhere else. And I feel like, like for me, if I wasn't so inquisitive and so like searching, you know, cause I just felt inside there is something, there is something better. This, I can't always be this way. I just recently read some old writings of mine that was just like, I wish I wasn't this way or this way or this way. And I was writing all these things. And then I, and then other people wrote what they experienced of me too. Cause it was like this group thing where everybody wrote, we we're trying to like figure each other out or something, and whatever. And they all experienced me the way I experienced myself, ironically. And I look at that person I was, and I know I was her. I don't, but I don't know her. It's like she's a stranger. And it's because that person was with those people trying to figure out how this isn't right. How can I be what I want? Because I know that like we are promised like joy in our lives. And and even, even if we weren't, like, we're searching for it, so we must have this desire, like, for some reason, but I knew there was more, and I feel like if you, if you really, because I've read somewhere, actually, that most people actually enjoy being sad or hurt, and that's why they are the way they are, 
And so if they actually wanted to get out of it, they could, you know, they just not, not like it's easy, but there's a long, hard journey, but to get there, you just kind of got to go, I'm done with this. I'm done with this addiction to being sad and poor me. And I want something better. It's going to be hard, harder than this maybe, but I'm going to find it. And, you know, and so not everybody finds it. And so I think, yeah, it's maturity, but also it's something deeper than that. Maybe the wisdom part of the maturity. I don't know. Well, our last guest uh, that we had on the show, Lou Alexander, something came, something that he said came to mind while you were saying that is, is we we were talking about it um, in, in terms of success particularly business success um, or, or finding a path out of, um, out of bad circumstances to find success. Um, and he, he simply said, it's in each and every one of us. We all have it. Yeah. We can all choose to find a path to success if we're willing to put in the work and to cultivate it. And, and, I, and, and I think that's, that's a lot about what you were just saying there is that it's in each and every one of us to be happy. It's in each and every one of us to find resolutions to our struggles if we're willing to cultivate that and work at it and try to get to the other side. Yes. Yes. I believe that because I lived it. Yeah. And tell your story along that way. Like that's part of your story that you tell, especially yeah. with like with what you do and with what small business owners do. You have to be able to tell your story and and the hard times are part of it, right? They are. The hard, the, the struggle is part of, of your story. So, man, that's, Tara, that's awesome. I'm going to ask you one more question. We're, we're, running, we're running short on time here, but I do want to ask one more question. Um, and it's probably a little late for this question. It probably would have been better 10 minutes ago. But I'm going to ask it anyway, just because I'm, I'm interested. So, um, so you kind of talked a little bit about, you know, you're, you're doing Christian music now because that's what you're inspired to do. And you have some other, you know, more traditional country songs that you've written that you're going to be releasing. How important is it in today's day and age to be cast in a specific musical genre? Is that still important? Or do you think that the industry now is allowing for a lot more uh, flex back and forth into different genres, or is it still important to identify as I am this type of musician? I think with branding, with anything, it's, it is important to just, you know, brand yourself as the thing that you are. Um, just because that's what people recognize and that's what people expect. And I think branding is very important, even in the music industry, um, because, you know, people go to you for that thing. But what's cool about country music is that a lot of country music, you know, has some Christian undertones to it. And a lot of, you know, country musicians talk about their faith um, openly, whether it's in their songs or in public, Um, not all, but Um, So it's kind of like many country musicians have crossed over and not even called their songs Christian. So um, it's just like a country song that, you know, it's just about God, you know. Um, So many of the even super, super famous ones have. Um, So I feel like in this case, it's not necessarily um, like a complete 180. It's more like a, you know, a little veer but that's still kind of on subject, you know? Um, Though it is very different though, because I've never really done something like this before, but um, I still feel like it's kind of, you know, really part of the country, you know, thing. Yeah, very cool. Would you do us the honor of playing a couple more songs for us before we go? For sure. All right, what's what's the next song you're going to sing for us? I'm going to sing uh, Get Back to Me, which is the song I released before Faith. And um, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Get Back to Me is a song about, um, you know, living across the, the country from someone and uh, just wanting them to get back to you. I guess that's the quick version of, of the story. Uh, my husband and I used to 
live across the country from each other when we first met. So, or when we first got together. Awesome. Sarah Tinsley singing, get back to me. Right? Did I get that right? Get back to me. You said you walked a million miles. Well, I'm not sure where you got that number from. But you wear out souls of your own feet to get back to me, to get back to me. I guess when you know, you know, now money don't you know. And when you find it, you don't want to let it go. You would go back in time, look into my eyes so I could see. You want to get back to me, get back. You said you'd sing songs so loud That your voice would travel across all the states Create a wind so strong it would blow through all the trees It would get back to me, get back to me I guess when you know, you know now, honey, don't you know? And when you find it, you don't want to let it go. You would go back in time, look into my eyes so I could see. Want to get back to me, get back. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, we're we're gonna ask you to sing one more for us, and for uh, for anybody who wants to to check this one out, um, this is gonna be a Patreon exclusive. But we would love for you to to join our membership, um, uh, and uh, you can go catch this uh, this last song that uh, the Tara's gonna do for us. Uh, what's the last one you're gonna sing for us here tonight? Okay, so this last one is called Like Your Daddy Does. And I was asked to write a father-daughter dance for my friend's wedding. And I couldn't figure out what, um, what to write, you know? Uh, and then one day I was in Nashville, it was raining and my windshield wipers weren't working. And I thought to myself, man, if my dad was here, he would already fix this before the rain started. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You gotta find the man who's gonna love you like your daddy does. Because if I had a man that was like my dad, that would have already happened. So I, anyway, that gave me the idea of the song, uh, like your daddy does. So then I ended up using this for my father daughter dance um, at my wedding. Awesome. You know what's cool about that song is that I ended up having a little girl, and I'm gonna sing that to her song, or to, to her, and hopefully she finds a guy that loves her like her daddy does, because her daddy loves her so much. That was kind of a heartfelt, cool thing that, you know, came about. I ended up having a girl. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. It's like your own little heirloom that you can pass on yeah. to your family. I've never thought of, of music quite like that, like an heirloom, but it really can be that, can it? Yeah, it's really cool. I uh, love that. Uh, so thank you for joining us on the uh, Business Over Beer podcast. We're going to leave it there for tonight, but before we go... Ben, it's time. Is it time already? All right. 
Tara, it's time for the final question. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. This is a two-part question, okay? So, Tara, you're walking in the in the hills of Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee, wherever you want to be. Or Texas, you can be in Texas. And uh, you're walking, and all of a sudden, you get a phone call. And on the other end is blank. And they're asking you to write a song. Okay, two questions. Who was on the other end of that conversation? And what is the name of that song? Is this hypothetical? Yeah. And the person, the, and by the way, the person can be either with us or not. And this is like a song I haven't written yet? Correct. No one's written in the whole world? Correct. And it, they want to be, it's a duet. Oh, it's a duet? Oh. Yeah. I just changed it. It's a duet. Now that you said throw that. that little detail in there at the yeah, end. It's a duet. See if anybody notices. <laughs> um, I would have to say it's Tom Petty. And he wants to write the song, We Didn't Back Down. I don't know. <laughs> it's because the song, I Won't Back Down. We did back down. That's good. That's wow. solid. Tom Petty. We'll come up with something better when him and I together we come up with the song title. You know. I wrote some down, but I won't tell you right now. It'll be a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> Tara, uh, absolutely incredible. Thank you for sharing your gifts with us. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, we really appreciate you spending some time with us and coming on the Business Over Beer podcast. Um, if people want to find out more about you, listen to more of your music, uh, where would you like people to go? TaraTinsley.com. It's super easy. And all the links to all the other things are there. Or you can just search my name on Google. It's pretty easy that way too. Outstanding. And uh, as always, uh, everything that we talked about uh, in uh, our interview with Tara will, of course, be in the show notes and the blog post for this episode. Please go check it out now. Hey, Knoper. Yeah. If people want to find a business over beer, where do they go? They go to the interwebs and they look for bizoverbeer.com, B I Z overbeer.com. We have all our social links there, blog posts. Uh, you can listen to and watch some of our YouTube videos there. And uh, there's another link that uh, is near and dear to your heart, is there not, on our website, Ben? Oh, Knope, are you talking about? The Patreon. I am talking about the Patreon. Yes, the Patreon, where everybody goes to who is either building tables or telling stories with music. That's right. Because at the end of the day, we need community and it takes a lot of help to get to where you want to go. And the community that we're building with the Patreon will help you do that. And it's only 10 bucks a month. Come on. That's nothing. That's nothing. And we have an awesome happy hour every month where we all get together as Patreons and we mastermind, we talk about different topics, and we sing songs and... <laughs> Eat but s'mores. You eat s'mores. And it's, it's just fantastic. Yeah, it's awesome. And you get some really cool stuff like Tara's special song specifically for the Patreons. That's right. So we want to thank you, Patreons, people listening, people watching. I'm sorry. Tara, thank you so much. I, I'm glad. I know it took a while for us to do this, but now it was worth the wait. You are awesome. You are bringing joy to people and you are letting them know that it's okay. It's okay to have faith. And that's really important nowadays. Canope, Kaler, thank you so much. We will see you all next time. 
night. Good night. Business Over Beer reminds you to always drink responsibly. Our theme song is Idiocracy by Christian Leo. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on Business Over Beer, a TH3 Entertainment production.